Hello, and welcome back to The Living Room with Father Brian Humphrey and myself, Jeremiah Shoup. Today, we want to talk about something that we're facing every day, one of our biggest opponents we face every day, and that is the unknown. And as we sit in the unknown, we ask ourselves a ton of questions. For example, how long is this quarantine going to last? Am I going to catch the virus? Anyone in my family going to catch the virus? When will we be able to receive the sacraments again? You know, what's going to happen with school, work, sports, our bank accounts? You know, all of these unknowns can really cause a lot, a lot of stress in our lives. Yeah, and Jeremiah, it's, I think it's important to first and foremost call it out. You know, if we don't even identify it, then we don't realize it's there. So we have to call out the fact that living with all these unknowns actually causes us stress. And instead of pretending like we have it all together, like I got this, I got this, um, we actually don't. We don't know a lot of stuff right now, and that causes us stress. And if we don't identify the stress that comes with the unknown, it can really sneak up on us. Right? So maybe we can call it sneaky stress. Okay? <laughs> and the pressure from the unknown is, you know, it's invisible. It just kind of comes. And, and once it's there, it's always there. We carry it with us everywhere we go. And sometimes we realize it's there. We see it in a glimpse, but we dismiss it as quickly as it comes. And it says, how are you? I, I'm fine. It, it, it's fine, you know. <clears throat> But that weight, it builds up every moment without us realizing it sneaks up, it builds up, and then, bam, we're overwhelmed, and we don't even really truly know why and what hit us. This really brings us into crisis mode you know, when we crash, like you said. And this crisis mode, you know, we really have two options with it. The first is we could keep pretending and the pressure builds up and builds up and builds up, and then it comes crashing down and we are forced into the crisis mode. Mm. Maybe we could call this like the roller coaster lifestyle. You know? I like that, yeah. But the other option is, is that we willingly enter into the crisis mode every single day, just little by little. You know? And when we do that in Christ with our faith activated, courageously, then God is the stabilizing factor in our life. And then that roller coaster lifestyle starts to get evened out. We start to live a more stable life. Here's the thing with those two options. Well, they're both going to have us ending up on our knees. Right. You know, the first option, that roller coaster up and down, it's out of fatigue, out of a sheer, I, I, I'm done. I have nothing left to give. It's that last hope that necessity and the second happens because well we willingly choose it to get down on our knees and say help me take this we make purposeful decisions to step out of our comfort zone in the second and willing to go on this journey or to invite christ to go into this journey with us think about the good samaritan i think this is a prime example of somebody stepping out of their comfort zone. The Good Samaritan could have kept on like the others in the story. But when faced with a choice and nudged by the Holy Spirit, Good Samaritan said, I want to be here. I need to help this. You know what I mean? He stepped into the unknown willingly. Ah, this so cool. We are going to challenge you to step out of your comfort zone. You have to. Now, maybe here's a couple things. Maybe you're saying, I, I, I don't know. What, what can I do? Here's a couple options for you. Maybe you can lead a prayer service for your friends or your family. Maybe you can answer the questions at the end of this video with your family. Lead that discussion. Maybe you can find a way to help strangers or those that are in need during this time of quarantine and pandemic, you know, and maybe you can make Jesus priority in your day. Give him an hour. The world prizes comfort, 
you know, that's sort of the, the end goal of the, of the good life, according to the world. If we could just yeah. be comfortable, that'll be enough. But we're, we're made for something greater than that. I mean, um, comfort doesn't ultimately save us. It doesn't satisfy us. So our faith is very countercultural. You know, instead of running away from the unknown and the discomfort into the arms of, of comfort, we actually turn around and we, we go towards the discomfort, the unknown, and trust that Jesus is, is actually with us in that and offering us something greater than the world can offer us. It's, I think about the third sorrowful mystery of the rosary, um, or the fourth sorrowful mystery of the rosary, and we read, you know, Jesus carries his cross. Um, and it's it's different. Sometimes you'll hear somebody announce the rosary mystery, and they'll say, Jesus embraces his cross. Huh? You know, it's different to to sort of carry it. That's one thing, but to embrace it, he goes towards it. And he, he knows that that is the key to relieving the stress from the unknown, is to go towards it. Um, and this is why we put crucifixes up in our rooms, in our houses all the time. We don't run away from it. We, we look at that stuff. Unknown, it's, it's this crazy monster that we are always running from. Because we see it and we go... What, what is that? Uh, it's just me. No, I can't deal with this. Let me just run. I, maybe I can escape it. You know what? I got a little headway. I, I can escape this. I, I can do this. I can run. I got this, baby. I got this. And the truth is, ladies and gentlemen, is it doesn't work like that. When we face this overwhelming beast, this unknown, it just gets faster. It gets bigger. It gets stronger. And it catches us. It always does. It, it eventually forces us to face it head on. And usually at this point, we are at our lowest because we have ditched God, ditched our safety net, and said, I, I got this. I can take this. Whatever life throws at me, I got this. Usually at this point, completely drained us and brought us to our lowest, lowest point. And at this point, one of two things is going to happen. Re remember that God is there. And he'll lift us up and we can say, you know what? I'm going to allow you to tame this beast that is chasing me, to tame the beast that's inside me. Or, or sometimes we just give up entirely. And we're consumed by that monster. You know, it actually takes a crisis sometimes to wake us up, you know? It actually takes that roller coaster down for us to turn to God and recognize that he's there with us, holding us. We don't have to be afraid. We don't have to run anymore. But yeah, so it's like this this monster is, is actually in the unknown parts of our interior life. There's these memories, these fears, these secrets that we have. And these monsters live in, in these unknown places. And so Jesus wants to come into those unknown places. He wants to, 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 to know us. You know, we have God who's all-knowing. Hmm. And when he enters into the unknown and meets a monster, so you have all-knowing God versus the unknown, this monster, who's going to win that battle every single time? God. Every time. <laughs> now, Paul, you were saying that, you know, God is all knowing. And we we're talking about this the other day. What There's that, the word, the official word, the, um, the term. Omniscient. The omniscient, right? Omniscient. Yes. Omniscient. Right. It means God is all knowing. He knows now, the past, present, and the future. Okay. And if he knows all, that means he knows us. He knows Father Brian. He knows me. He knows you. And he knows us perfectly. He knows us even better than we know ourselves. He knows our fears, our secrets, our monsters, everything, our hopes, our dreams. And not only does this free us from the stress, but it fulfills our deepest human longing. And that is to just be known. That's right. 
Right, the deepest longing of the human person is to be known and to be loved. Mm. This is how God made us. You know, what makes us different from the animals is that we have an intellect and a will. And this corresponds to the intellect seeks to know and be known. And the will seeks to love and be loved. And so when we're operating at this level, then we're truly being human. You know, instead of just avoiding pain and seeking pleasure like the animals do, we actually operate with our intellect and our will to know and be known and to love and be loved. And next week, we're going to talk about this will and this ability to love and be loved this longing that we have. But for now, we just are sticking with the fact that the remedy of the stress that comes from the unknown is to be known by God. You all know what it feels like to be unknown and to be misunderstood, right? right. Think about that question. We all know what it what it feels like to be misunderstood. I mean, sometimes our teens might feel like your parents, maybe they just run right by you without actually stopping even for a second to really see you. Maybe they just see right through you. Mm. You Don't take them a minute to see exactly what you're going through. You know, and maybe some of our spouses, our married couples out there, maybe we're not taking a moment to stop and to see what they're going through because we're too much in crisis mode, roller coaster mode up here, that we just thought, mm hmm, you know what I mean? And that can make us feel super lonely, even with all the people around us, even with the people that we know love us unconditionally, we still feel so lonely. Now, there's this homeless man in Los Angeles, and he says that so many people pass by me every day, so many people. But at the same time, I've never felt so alone. You know, and as human beings, we truly need to be seen. and We need to be understood. We have to. We need to be known. And it's hard for us to give this to each other all the time. To truly stop to see, to know them. But the thing is that God can perfectly fulfill this in our lives every day because he knows us right yeah we cannot complete each other Mm -mm. there's that jerry Maguire movie i'm dating myself (laughs) now but you know tom cruise says to the to the girl and he says you complete me you know and it's it's supposed to be this romantic moment but it doesn't work that way we're not in the movies we're in reality we cannot complete each other only god can complete us Only God can meet the deepest desire of our heart to be known in every way. Um, And and these are the deepest desires of our hearts, to be known and to be loved. When we let God know us, when we let him truly see us, when we freely give ourselves to him, whatever state we may be in, sad or angry or happy or overwhelmed or tired or bitter, whatever, when we get real about these things, God's gaze sets us free from all the stresses of the unknown. With God, we're never alone. Um, You know, he wants to join us on this interior adventure. He wants to, to know, like you said, whatever that real reality is you know it's like we hold up authenticity at such a high standard these days you know it's like young people and they're scrolling through their facebook or their instagram or whatever i guess the old people like us do facebook they, they probably don't do facebook or, but so they, they scroll through it and they scroll through it and they can look at so much data so quickly and they're like nope nope not real oh and then they stop for just a second because they see a spark of the authenticity and that They've trained themselves with so much data input to be able to say, okay, what's real, what's not? I mean, you speak in front of young people all the time. If you're going to go up there and not be yourself, like uh-huh. they, they check out because they're like, yeah. this isn't this isn't the real, per- this isn't authentic, and yeah. I'm, I'm not I'm not interested. So it's like you cannot you, you can't be a fraud in front of them, you know. So this level of authenticity is something we prize in our world, 
And why not prize that in our relationship with God? You know, why not actually be whatever we are? You know, if you're like not okay, then you're not okay in, with God. Invite him into that. He's so pleased. He's so delighted that you've come to him and that you've shared with him you're not being okay. You know, and he wants to go on that adventure with us, whatever it is and wherever it leads us interiorly to whatever memories, whatever secrets, whatever. He, he, he's longing to join us on this interior adventure. I mean, I like to go fishing and go camping and, you know, all these other kinds of adventures, but none of them even come close to the adventure of the interior life. Uh -huh. It's wild, right? It is. And I, I just had this picture in my head of taking a road trip and then God running over and be like, I got shotgun. And I, yeah, 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 totally. It's like, I'm with you. You are not alone. Like, and I want to know everything. I want to know everything. Exactly. And it, I want to be with you inside, outside, and everywhere. Now, this connects to our prayer song for today, ladies and gentlemen. And there's a whole world inside of us, each and every one of us, okay? And as Psalm 139 says, God searches us and knows us. He wants to explore every corner of our heart. So let's take a moment to prepare our hearts right now and invite you to close your eyes. Let's be honest with God about where we are right now in our lives. Really and truly, no facade, no faking. Let's allow him to see us truly vulnerable, to know us and to love us. So that we can be free from the stress of the unknown. We can offer him fitting praise and thanksgiving in return. Search me, oh Lord, you know me, oh Lord, you search me, oh Lord, you know me. Oh, oh, oh.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Be to God. Thank you, Jeremiah. Thank you all. Mm-hmm.